Hey there, fellow YouTubers, custodial friends. Today I'm going to share with you on how to maintain a mop machine, auto scrubber, whatever you want to call it. Today we're going to flip the squeegees over and maintain that thing. So here we go. Okay, there's going to be three things that we're going to do to our machine today, maybe four. Is uh, we're going to change the pad, we're going to rotate the squeegee, flip it over, we're going to uh, clean the filter, and we're going to check the batteries on this machine, and we're just going to kind of wipe it down and clean it up. But um, <clears throat> let's get to right to first thing we're going to do on this machine is we're going to flip the squeegees over. And maintaining of a auto scrubber or a mop machine, I mean, you change the oil in your car, or at least I hope you put some oil in your car, because you want to maintain the maintenance and longevity of, of your car, uh, you gotta take care of it. Same thing happens with these uh, auto scrubbers and mop machines. And if you have multi-people using your machines in your school, uh, you can keep a log, clipboard, uh, or you just have an assigned person, I don't know if you have a lead custodian or somebody, uh, we actually have a company that has come in and worked on our machines, and I prefer just to do it myself because most of the time when they leave, they're in uh, worse working order than they was when they came. Give you an example was what I'm fixing to do is flip these squeegees over is they changed the squeegees on our machine, and they didn't put soft squeegees back on for some reason. They were old squeegees, but they were hard, and they were really streaking the floor. The squeegees were vibrating and it really caused a problem and they, they took our old squeegees with them and uh, never have got that machine back like it was because we just can't seem to get any squeegees for that machine that work. Every time they order some, they order the exact same kind that they put on there instead of the soft ones that we had. So, this machine right here, we've had it for a while and the squeegees have never been changed, they've never been flipped over. So. This is going to be a machine that I've never done this on before. All mop machines are basically the same. They operate basically the same. Maybe the buttons are in a different place. The filters are in a different place. The pad changing may be a little different. But uh, they basically operate the same. If you've ever done any of them, if you just kind of take your time and look at it, uh, it all operates basically the same. Uh, the flipping of the squeegees, uh, some of them you have to have tools. Uh, some of them you don't. This one I don't know, so we're going to take a look at it and see what we need. All right, the first thing that you need to do when you're working on a uh, auto scrub or anything like that, I'm going to turn this thing around sideways, maybe get more light in the hall, is make sure that your machine is off. Because, well, if you bump the handle or anything, it's not going to back up and run over you. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do right here on this machine is I'm going to unhook the vacuum hose right here and basically all these machines have these little nuts right here that loosen by hand uh, and the squeegee just slides off and you leave the squeegee in the up position so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the squeegee and most all of these have these little clips right here where they're on the end I've got one on our machine upstairs another one that's you know in the middle right here but I'm going to take a look at this and see what I need. And uh, basically all it looks like that I'm going to have to do is uh, flip that. So let's flip this and see what happens. And these things can be just a little aggravating. This one kind of slides out. All right. Now, the main thing is, is when you take these off, is to look how you're taking this off. If you gotta put it back on the same exact way. All right. And don't get your front squeegees and your back squeegees confused. Your back squeegees are solid. They just have the hose in the middle all the way down the uh, squeegee to where it mounts and where the bracket goes on. Okay? so. I know this is the bottom where the white is. The writing's on the bottom on this one right here, which you can take a marker and put an arrow or whatever. But I'm just gonna take it off and lay it in the floor just like it come off. 
and I'm going to try to figure out how to get this other one off right here. This looks like it might be a little bit more difficult to get off. Like I say, we're learning this one together. But what has happened is my squeegee here is uh, it started streaking. Squeegee started streaking the floor. Okay, this one here has these wing nuts here. Never had one like this before. They come off. This is an ice machine. Uh, first time we've had one of these. Okay. And yeah. A little aggravating here. Right, I think I gotta take the whole thing apart. Like I say, you have to kind of just work these things a little bit to kind of figure out how they uh, how they operate. I'll tell you what we're going to do here. We're going to push the machine out of our way. Get some more light. All right. Yes. All right. I'm just going to set that straight out of the way. All right. This squeegee here is going to be a little fun to change. All right. So this was uh, I have to look at it and make sure that you keep up when you take your squeegee off, which was the bottom and which was the top. Because what you're going to do is you're just going to flip this thing straight over uh, when you change it. Okay. So. Anytime you take these apart, this one here is in really good shape. A lot of times they have a lot of uh, trash and debris and different things like that. So you need to clean all that off before you flip your squeegees over. I'm just going to go ahead and, for the sake of uh, helping folks out, because if you've never done this before, this can be very intimidating. And I can already tell this this one here is probably going to be a little bit aggravating, uh, possibly to put back together. But you can tell on here that this is the wire side that has been wearing on this <clears throat> because it's dirty, and that's the side that's been against the floor. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this flat. And uh, I'm gonna mark this as the front blade. I'm just gonna write front on there. I'm gonna write back on here. Okay. And I'm gonna put an arrow pointing up. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip that over and that's gonna be pointing toward the floor. That way if you happen to get called or whatever, uh, a really good time to do this is days it's, uh, it's a holiday, you're off. Uh, well, not off, but people's not here. You're not off, that's for sure. But, uh, because <clears throat> this does take a little bit of time to do, and it's something once you get to started, you want to do it. It doesn't take that long. For a machine, but when, the easiest way to put this one back on, say I've never had one like this, most of them clamp on, but this track fits in there with these teeth on there. So, I look at my squeegee. And to make sure, because I got to remember that this is upside down, so I want this arrow to be pointed up toward the ceiling. And I'm going to lay it in this little groove right here. And like I say, I can't tell you for your own particular mop machine, because they're all different. And all the mop machines I've had, I've never had one that went together like this one. 
this one this one seems to be easier than I thought it was going to be because <clears throat> actually I can just kind of work that the teeth right in there and there she is it's, it's, it's in place and uh, ready to put the back squidgy on so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick this up on this particular one and there again my arrow since this is upside down I want it to be pointed up toward the ceiling that I made now what this does is these squeegees have two sides so it's like having a brand new squeegee on here uh, when you do this And this is where it separates the men from the boys right here. We'll be putting these bad boys right here on because they are some more aggravating. This one has a little pin in it. And I, I can't show you every detail that I'm doing because You just have to work with whatever machine that you have. But basically, the main thing is to pay attention to how you took it apart. Okay. Now, that should hold my squeegee in there when I flip this over. Yes. So, I'm going to tighten these back down. Okay. Tighten these inwards down. Well, that was really nice. <laughs> good, good plasket there. All right. You're just keeping it real, folks. That's the way it is. Keep it real. All right. These are my two uh, that's going to hold my squeegee on the machine. So, we're all clean. We're back on. Let's take a double look, make sure everything's lined up. Make sure the front squeegee is the one that has the little uh, grooves in it right here. Because that's where your water goes and your back squeegee catches. And uh, <clears throat> back on the machine. Okay. Now. going to let the squeegee down make sure that that is pushed all the way up I don't want to break any more of these off but this is definitely what holds the squeegee on okay after that is done you just simply hook your uh, You simply hook your hose back up. You can definitely tell we're in school. It's first thing in the morning. And you should be ready to go. Uh, these machines, different ones have different adjusters on. Right here, our adjusters are wheels. Uh, where we would turn to, to tilt your squeegee front or tilt it back. Uh, I would say avoid that at all costs. Do not start adjusting your squeegee. If your squeegee is leaving water on the floor or leaving streaks on the floor and it's got some age on the squeegees, try flipping your squeegees or getting a new set of squeegees first because when you start messing with these adjustments, uh, you've got a whole new ball game on you that if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to leave a lot of water. You're going to leave water coming out of the middle of your squeegee or off one end of your squeegee. Uh, if it has been doing a pretty good job, and it's probably that you're... That you're uh, squeegees rubbers need to be changed and uh, anytime that you get new squeegee rubbers they need to be soft rubber because if they're hard they're going to jump like a bad set of windshield wipers so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the pan. okay changing the pan on a auto scrubber is uh there are different ways to do this my 
easiest, fastest way for me is just to lay down on the floor and do it. I prefer to do one when a machine is I have a nice dry pad where it won't get junk all over me so this one's nice and dry. So ours has a button that you mash that locks this blade or locks this blade. I think I'm in my wood shop. Locks this uh, pad in place for it to just turn and slide out of its grooves. You just pull it out of the machine and this in here actually is a lot like a high speed buffer. The middle just comes out. These pads are also two sided so I'm not going to actually have to put a new pad on there. Uh, I'm not going to get into colors of pads. Uh, white pad is what we use on these machines right here. Uh, to keep from damaging the wax too much. It gets later on in the year and I'm getting toward the end. I might start using a red pad or a green pad when it's really getting bad and getting these things on there and started. It's not a lot of fun. I know what y'all saying. You're just scratching that floor. Probably am. Okay. Ever how your it goes in there? Some of these clip on, some of them you know screw on like this, whatever. But like I say, all machines are different, so you just need to change these pads as they get sold. You just kind of have to know how much you're using your machine. And in order to put mine back on, I just reverse what I just did. I kind of turn mine to make sure I can see through here that everything's lined up and then I just hold this button and make sure it's locked. And I turn it again to make sure it's in every groove and it is. Another most important or really important thing that you need to do with your machine is to keep your batteries in good shape. And this machine here tilts to the side. Some machines raise up from the front, got latches on them, and different things. If you're fortunate enough to have uh, gel batteries, you don't really have to worry about this. But most of us have acid batteries, and you want to make sure that you check this pretty often. Once a month would be a good thing and you want to make sure that you use distilled water don't go get this thing of tap water and start putting it in your mop machines this one could use just a little bit of water what you want is you want your water level to be just right over the cell i don't know if you can see in there i think you can that's just right over the cell that one right there really can't get let me see I didn't bring my little fancy flashlight with me to work today. But um, you can see that the water level in there is, uh, if you can see that, it's not quite up to the top of the sail. You don't want these to be too full because when you charge them, they'll boil over. And uh, that's just not good for them. It's really good to fill these batteries up, uh, what I have been told, when they're at a full charge. That way the water level is up and uh, that's a good way not to overfill them as well. Alright, <clears throat> got to keep in mind now that uh, you don't want to put too much water in your batteries again. So you got to think about how full this funnel will be and I like to use a funnel with a uh, thing in this thing where it's great for a lot of things. But uh, distilled water is what you're going to use. And I'm just going to kind of just pour just a little. And that's about all that cell needed right there. You know I mean? Just, just enough to cover them cells up.
So when you get it complete, just put your battery caps back on there. A uh, good idea to wear gloves when you do this and don't rub your clothes because if you have any battery acid, I've eat a whole slap through pair of pants doing this one time. Got battery acid on me and the next thing I know I felt a pretty cool breeze and the whole front of my breeches leg was going up top. Dry your batteries off, you spilt any water when you get complete and close your machine up. Be ready to go. Okay, these machines have uh, water filters on them and uh, they need to be cleaned out. Nothing to change, you just have to clean them out. And all these machines should have a water cutoff and straight up and down means it's on and turn to the side mean to solve pretty much like a sink cut off uh, but anyway you kind of have to locate those some of them are up front some of them are in the back uh, get your owner's manual to your machines out but most of them just twist off there's gonna be some water right out right here and don't get it on you Woo! and I'm gonna pull machine if you can see all that rust and debris right there that come out of that filter so See that? If your machine quits feeding water, uh, I mean, that's just like rust and soap debris, I mean, scum buildup or whatever gets on these filters. So just take it and clean it and put it back on. Okay, I just cleaned that thing with just tap water. I didn't go through a letting it soak and all that kind of stuff. All you're doing is washing debris out of it. No. Uh, Put your filter back in and put your filter back in and put them back on. Uh, probably an easier way for me to have been able to do this if I would have done this when I had my squeegee off. I could have probably got to it a whole lot easier. How often do you need to do this? Uh, I would say once a month at least. It really depends on your water source and you know what all you have in your water, what kind of chemicals you use, and if you use chemicals in your machine, I prefer really not to use chemicals in my machine because I've had more problems doing that than I have just using straight water. Uh, main thing is, is when you get done, is to make sure that you cut your water back on. If you're not, you're gonna be like, what is wrong with my machine? So cut your water back on. Another good thing to remember is to do this. If your machine is going to be sitting up for a while, figure out where you can drain your water. I always will you have to unhook this hose right here. Sometimes I carry it outside, I carry it in the bathroom, and the, that's the fresh water uh, that you mop with. Uh, I like to clean that out if my machine is going to be sitting for a while because it will get stale. It will start smelling, and uh, it can cause some problems on getting some lime build up or something in, in your machine and stop your filters up and your pump up or whatever. So if it's going to be sitting for over a week, so you're going to be gone for Christmas break, if you ain't use it in a while toward the end of the summer, whatever, you might want to clean that out. And you can take like a microfiber, just a wet microfiber, you don't have to use any chemicals and just kind of, you know, keep your machine cleaned up. Because I've seen some mop machines that, oh my word, they were filthy, they are used by everybody in the community, seems like, and they're just thrown back in the, the closet, and they look terrible. Then you have a service guy that does come out, and he's like, man, this machine looks pretty rough. But... You just want to kind of take care of it because I don't know if y'all systems like ours, it takes a long time to to get one of these. A lot of effort, a lot of convincing to them that 
you know your machines wore out and they just don't want to spend the money on them sometimes <clears throat> now when you get done using your machine for today you know if it's dirty like that give her give her a little wiping i've spent about 30 minutes here on this machine doing what i've just showed you that i've done just to help maintain it and to take care of it as far as the squeegee changing goes uh that 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 can last you know for a while before you have to do that between squeegee, squeegee changing filter cleaning once a month uh keep her charged up if you can charge it in a cool place that's really good because that really helps maintain the battery life keep those batteries cool this particular machine right here you yeah, actually lifts up right here to give a little air space uh, for the batteries to to kind of stay cooler always always keep it charged up for the next person that comes along has them do the same for you uh, always wash your tank out when you're done check this filter right here this is actually has a little ball in it if it gets too full uh, it will uh, start making a high pitch noise that you know the machine's getting full and it's time to empty it but always wash your tank out leave your tank open where it can air out because you don't want this thing smelling like rotten eggs uh, the next time you go get it or somebody else goes gets it as well so that's basically it all these machines are basically the same so if you take care of them they will definitely take care of you okay now that i've uh, got everything cleaned up put back together let's do a little moment of truth right here right here's where i uh change the filter so there's a puddle of water there so i'm going to squid you down turn the vacuum on and see if we leave any streaks see if i squid you changing flip it over done any good no streaks dry as it can be so that was my problem right there uh, because I was having a whole lot of problem with my squeegees streaking and, and leaving a lot of water on the floor. So that right there really helped turning those squeegees over. Just maintain those uh, those machines. Take care of them. Well, that seemed to uh, really help my mop machine problem with a squeegee streaking the floor. So you know, if you're having some issues with your, your auto scrubber or mop machine, you know, just take the time, take a few minutes to look at it kind of observe the things because they're really simple machines they're put together very simple and uh, that maintenance really 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 helps on those machines a whole lot and there's something that I meant to uh, to tell you about when your your machine about draining that fresh water out uh, you can also leave that filter off of your machine and cut your water back on your machine and I will also uh, drain that water out of your uh, fresh water holding tank also so if uh, <clears throat> you can't take the hose off or anything that's another way to do it that's usually the, most of the time the way I do it uh, that way so I know what's going to happen is is I've just mopped my hall and everything's nice and clean well when I get here at eight o'clock in the morning after the breakfast it's gonna be very disappointing I know because I know it ain't gonna be about five minutes. And I'm gonna have to do it again. So go out there and sweep some halls, clean some batteries, and take out some garbage. It's job security, folks. It's job security. <laughs> Thank you.